everyone. Basil Chapman here, sitting here for Tom O'Brien. This is Friday the 13th. This is the 3 o'clock, 3, that's the 7 minutes past, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Time. Just, I want to talk about this really quickly. Uh, I do the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock to 11 every market day here at TFNN. Done it for over 20 years. And I also have a service called The Opening Call. Uh, daily newsletter, very detailed newsletter, and I'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a little while. But I just wanted to show you there's a technique that I developed years ago. I, for, my, for those of you who are either subscribers or are going to subscribe to my newsletter, you'll be you're getting 8, 9, 10, 11 um, webinars that I've done, and each one really does a whole bunch of different things that I've learned over the years that I teach in these webinars, and then I repeat them and show them in charts through my, throughout the day. This is called the long, narrow rectangle formation. There's a time where a chart, doesn't matter what it is, very often it's the futures, this is the E-mini, S&P futures, trading at 43.59, down 21, where it goes into a long, narrow, sideways trading range, and it stays there. And every time you think it's going to break down, it holds the line and uses it as a propellant, and it goes up to the top line. And that border, you think, oh, this time it's going to break to the upside. No, it gets reversed, and it's just like a ping pong ball. Eventually, it goes to, in the Chapman Wave, the fourth or fifth highest peak, a D or an E, alphabetized, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G on the way up, same thing on the way down. And it goes to an E or D, and then it pulls back. If it takes out this halfway mark, I just made it kind of faint. I'll make it a little thicker right now, and I'll make it blue because it's it's, now at this point it's really important. Here we go. This blue line, I usually do this by eye. So my eye says just around about here yeah, at about 43.57. That's the midpoint of the channel. What happens is if it goes above, and that above is at a D or an E, then there's a really good chance that if it takes out the middle line, this, this horizontal midpoint of the channel, there's a really good chance it's not only going to take uh, go to the bottom of the, of the trend line, the base, it's going to take it out. But what happens is it takes it out, and then it revisits that because it's always so quick that it's like I haven't said goodbye to everybody. I, I, I just pop back up so I can say goodbye. And it goes, but if it then takes out on the way up after that, you see the down arrow, after that potential up arrow, there's a chance it could revisit the upper trend line and you'd stay in this range. Well, lo and behold, it did exactly that. Then it popped down again. It went back above the, the left side low, and now it's stuck in this range. So let's revisit it in a little while, but I am impressed. Yeah, we're going to tell you what I'm impressed about today. I'm impressed about two things. One is, J.P. Morgan came out with earnings. Uh, they evidently, I mean, some of it was very bad, but some of it was very good. It's always this mixed result with the banks. But the banks, the, the, the marketeers loved it. So it caps up this morning. It, it closed um, yesterday at about 148, uh, 145.50. It opens this morning. At 148.50, uh -uh, not good enough. It screams up to the 153 level, and now it's trading at 148.20, up 2.35. So it is now underneath the opening price. So that's one thing. So that's really important. Why? Because it impacts the XLF, which is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if the financials are lagging, it's a drag on the market. It's a drag. It's, it's telling us about the economy. It's, it's telling us about a lot of things. So I'm just putting that out there to say until the XLF, this is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund trading at 33.20, up six cents, still up cents, uh, a couple of cents because uh, Wells Fargo came out, a couple came out with earnings, um, and that gap up, it's still a gap up in J.P. Morgan. Uh, not a great looking candle at this particular point. But if at any point in the next week, I'm not going to give it two weeks. I'm giving it next week. It really speed is of the essence now. So if it's able to tag 39.92, the 200 period moving average, and then close above it, I would say that that is really good action. 
That's number one. Number two is the fact that if you're looking at this weekly chart, this orange 200 period moving average in the XLF has been holding very nicely and we're making, yes, we're making lower highs and lower lows. But this candle, I'm going to call it for the moment, I'm not going to go into it, I'll do that maybe on Monday in my show, is an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. If there is a move next week on a daily basis, even though it's a weekly chart, and on any day there's a close above 33.45, that's a big ask. But if there's one, then I would say that, that then you could tag the... Uh, 14 period exponential moving average and the five uh, nine period moving average, which is actually negative right now at 3381. All right, now let's go through the story. The Dow, I knew you. The Dow is now up 68 points. What a what a whippy day it's been. Uh, at 72, up 72, 33,703. We have begun a leg B. Uh, just for clarification, you see the little long here. We have a trading long, kind of aggressive trading long, three times long, but a small position. Uh, we are still short from August the 1st. That was the very high of the Dow at 35,679. That was the August 1st high. And we still hold that short, but we've got a trading long. I, it might sound confusing, but then you also have to go back to October right there where we went along the day of the low. And we're still long from the low of uh, 2020, March of 2020. So these are different time cycle positions. This is a trading one because I'm not sure that this is going to last all that long, this, this rally. And then I think we have to do some testing. Do we have to break the 32? The reason why we went long on the 6th is that was an exact, I was talking about this on my show, there was an exact time match from the May 25th low of 32,586 the number of bars to the high of the 1st of August to the number of bars on the 6th, it matched exactly. And we were within a couple of hundred points of that left side low and other techniques said, hey, this would be a really good opportunity just in risk reward to go long and we are still long. We're taking some profits, but we are still long. I just wanted to get that out the way because the next thing we want to look at here is the S&P with the weekly chart. And I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, the S&P is down 15. The Dow's up 72. We'll be right back.